I ended up finding a, a video of you on Facebook or on U- YouTube actually the other day and posted it on our Twitter, which got a few people asking about it. Uh, it was from the streets of San Francisco. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Never heard of it. Back in it was 1976, I believe. Do you remember uh, what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. There's a scene of you laying down in a, a bed, and your mom comes in the room and uh, asks what's going on, and you ask her for money and car keys. You get up uh, and leaving. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's that's what I was going to ask you earlier this morning, and I did my own research and ended up finding it out. Uh-huh. Um, so, but yeah, no, I had a few people reach out and ask how you got involved on the film. Um, so those were some of the questions I wanted to ask uh, on for the frontier. San Francisco? No, on, on the frontier. Oh, on the frontier. Well, the way I got involved uh, on Frontier was that I, my daughter India, when when she was in preschool, was in preschool with Matt. Oh no way! And I, that's how Elliot and I met and became friends. And um, and then uh, time came. My daughter, uh, her mother had died when she was actually in her first beginning of preschool. She hmm. was like two years and eight months old when her mom died. And then around when she was in kindergarten I met someone else and and we connected and had another you know got married had a child on the way and um, and uh, she bonded with Elliot's wife Matt's mom who Mm -hmm. was having Zach (laughs) was was born I can't remember now it was the same day or a day after or before my son Maxwell okay so we've known each other for many years very connected with the director we used to play with uh, Play over and play tennis and, and basketball with Elliot, who's you know about five eleven, but plays like he's a six four. <laughs> competitive, the competitive part of Sean, you know, is, but um, and um, just have just great regard, you know, for the parts sort of part of each other's extended families. And Elliot called me a while back and said, "I've got a screenplay I want you." To so Elliot read. approached you. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and he said uh, Matt wrote it, and that you know got my attention. I'm sure. More yeah. Because I've always had a great regard for Matt. There's a part of part of him that's always had this wonderful, calm sort of accepting, watching, right? You know, nature. And I think that the, the wonderful thing that he's doing here is is um, is you know holding the space for a whole lot of really really wonderfully talented bunch of young people. I think I'm uh, I'm the elder here by a factor of two with the next <laughs> person. Uh, probably twice as old as the next oldest person. But um, but anyway, uh, so I read it and I, I thought it was uh, you know wonderful. He said, well, you know, I came over and did a reading with uh, just to read it out with with Coleman and right and uh, Anastasia and. Uh, you know, they're wonderful, luminous young people. <laughs> um, you know, we just kind of, you know, I'm, so I'm just fit right in. For it. Yeah. Right, and, puzzle and, piece. Uh, really wonderful. For me, the first opportunity I've ever had to actually play a part that's got this much to do in a film and have as much time as we had to think about it. Okay. Which has been great because there's a lot of mystery in this and a lot of paradox, you know, and they intentionally, as from screenwriting, tried to, you know, not answer a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. It's not like a Lifetime movie with a whole bunch of moral stuff. You know, right. Uh, you know, sort of clear conventional morality. But on the other hand, it is like those movies in the sense it's just about feelings that people have. Mm-hmm. About, you know, there's, there's not a big action movie. It's not a, a you know, a funny ha-ha buddy movie. It's not any of the kinds of movies that are wonderful, successful genres. But I think this is um, a, a really special opportunity. And I'm really, I'm really uh, glad to be working on it. Yeah. Well, you seem to be taking the role head on. I mean, you, you are Sean Sullivan. <laughs> well, you know, we, every that that sort of, uh, you know, happens with every part. I mean, that actor is the one playing the part, so right. they are the character. Right. You know, and at the same time, there are differences. You mm-hmm. know, and you try to find that balance of what's what what's the same and what, right. what is different. And uh, you know, we're all working on our kind of conscious level and our unconscious or our other, you know, some would say the, the amygdala and other parts of the brain, you know, right, right, right. aren't popping into our verbal realm, but, uh, but we all got that makeup, and uh, so 
I, uh, I, 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 I love that we're doing this process too. You know, it's interesting because I've been real involved with the technology for quite a while. Not so much in like investing and doing a startup. I, I right. saw it more. I come, coming out of the '60s and '70s, and you know, for me, it, it was more about well, how can we use these tools to for to have a better conversation with each other as a species, right? You know? And to uh, you know, for sort of for let's just say social and environmental mm-hmm. justice or mm-hmm. balance or fulfillment and um, uh, so uh, you know Sean's kind of gone the other way you know? right he, you know we figured out so how you know just thinking through things okay so if mom died let's say 2002 or something like that just figure the calendar so the kind of professor then he had to have some kind of email thing going on because by then you couldn't be functioning you know but without it yeah was actually doing all of that right you know, lots of lots of people that they got their secretary to do their email and they, th- they think they're doing it but they haven't really crossed over you right know? and i think he probably was getting fed up with classes that were on their laptops yeah you know all that kind of stuff so right where, where's the wh- which which side do we come down so here i'm doing an interview and you uh, you know Right on an iPhone. Back in 1980 yeah. when portable video was showing up. Yeah. And I was myself, yeah, I'm a cop in a primetime sitcom, but I'm hanging out with the American Indian movement. And, no <laughs> and we got these portable cameras now, and they're, they're only, they're, they're, they were the size. Of what our actual what cameras are, yeah. Now, you yeah. Know? And, uh, and um, uh, you know, lugging around these big recording decks. And, mm-hmm. uh, um, but to try to use the these tools to share this, um, you know, in this ongoing human process of storytelling. And, um, and I think that what, where they're pushing it out with the whole idea of crowdfunding and, and the whole idea of Kickstarter and others uh, that enable people to participate in some kind of way with something, mm-hmm. and become a part of it, uh, I think. Because right now, a whole so much of film is driven by how do you pre-sell the big movie internationally. Right. So we're getting these wonderful roller coaster rides and things and incredible special effects and that's all great but we're sort of losing that that simpler part of storytelling. Right. You know, uh, a, lot, a lot of it exists on cable today because the narrative but on the other hand a lot of that is kind of kind of edgy you know Breaking Bad and whatever. I mean mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not against it but uh, you know I'm drawn personally to Stuff that, that that touches more. right, and um, uh, so I think this way of doing what we're doing, and kind of not so much creating, building, or any of those words, but but just you know supporting community development around it. Who knows what I know that, that uh, here there are connections forming up that will be creative connections down the road. Right. And I think that can be happening going out. And I was with, talking with Ken Cragen the other day, who's part of this media entertainment technology line. It's Ken for for those who, who you know may not know, but he was I mean he he managed some of the great artists of our time. He was a very inventive manager. So he he got a whole of artists that ended up not only with hit records but TV shows. Right. You know there and and then and he was part of uh, uh, USA Dead Africa huh. Live Aid. Mm-hmm. He came up with Hands Across America. Came up with like, well, let's get people to join Hands Across America to support. You know, he's he's been doing this this kind of thing, and and he uh, introduced me to his uh, his maybe his future son-in-law. Anyway, his daughter's new new squeeze, who's, right? Who's with the, the film department over at UCLA, and they are breaking uh, the you know class of thirty-two into four groups, each of which will. Uh, have a uh, you know a project where there's a director, writer, and producer, and then the others fill in doing sound and right other positions. Yeah, everybody switches. Everybody right, has that experience of having done 
these other things. And I think there's a great overlap of what we're doing, so that's something we'll try to feed in. So whatever students are watching, you said there are yeah, there's film schools. A you know, good amount of film schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually just had a makeup artist from Oregon just finished school and reached out to us to ask our makeup artist how she got started. Uh, and where where to look for to, to, bleh, where to look for jobs and actually get jobs in the film industry because it's it's different for features rather than you know going into other projects nowadays you know you can get stuck in a different realm that you might not might want to work in. Yeah. Um, so yeah yeah no we have a lot of people reaching out for uh, to us uh, L A Film School and actually specifically retweets us a lot. Um, I'm I'm hoping there's a lot of students. <laughs> well, one of the things that I got involved in was kind of in the middle '90s. <clears throat> I, I was looking for what I could do with all this documentary footage that had maybe had been a little too radical for ABC in 1980 mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. But anyway, because <clears throat> the CD-ROM was like the exciting yeah. platform in the right. 90s. But as I began to explore that, I, somebody said, you know, well, that's got about another year left of all the early adopters buying these CD-ROMs, you know. Um, but look at this, and it showed me Mosaic, which was developed by some college students in Illinois. But about a year later, it became the Netscape browser. It was okay. the first browser. And when I saw that, my immediate thought was, oh, you could connect Sesame Street and Head Start. You know, connect the on-air realm with the on-land realm, with right. this new online realm. And they were going to converge, and something new would emerge out of it. That was my thought, and I didn't know enough to know how long it would take to get to the... To the, enough broadband to be able to do video and all. Right. I mean, we hadn't even settled on JPEG yet. You know, there were, <laughs> there were um, all kind of a, a lot of people thought it was going to be a fractal. You know, the way the way they compressed the video would be with fractals and stuff. You know, so, but to see that possibility for uh, and uh, you know people to use these tools and especially if we we could get them out. Then computers were still kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. There was a certain a slice of the population that had the disposable income. Right. Uh, we certainly didn't have them in our pockets or right. holding them up right. on each other, you know. But but we um, so I got very involved with the, all the community technology, you know, digital divide kind of people looking to create ways for people to come together and on the res or in inner city and 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 uh, so came up with this idea of local access places. And maybe we could create a television show that was like a place-based comedy, like Barney Miller had been, or right. Cheers, or something. But, but actually, it was just the model to do it. It's kind of the way America's Funniest Home Videos became a show created by the audience mm -hmm. because people had video cameras. But rather than those cheesy parameters of, oh look, Aunt Lucy's skirt just blew up. You yeah. know, Uncle Walt just slipped off the dock. But actually, people telling their stories in their communities and sharing with each other and. And uh, I like local access places because it's LAP. And so there's, you know, our LAP is our storytelling domain and mm -hmm. our, our domain of care and response. So there were a lot of reasons, a lot of, a lot of things I, I finally stuck with that. And in time, came to see that, you know, when you're trying to bring a business and government and the nonprofit sector and the popular culture, you know, together for this kind of change, that that one of the challenges is in our world today, we don't have a way to circle up and share who we are in the way that I found being around Native Americans or Aboriginal people or, you know, our, our ancestors, all this is what we do. We, 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 we get in a circle and we share who we are and we, you know, in the old days, council would talk, talk it out long enough until all the, the bad answers went away and the, the good ones came up. Right. You know? Instead now we default to debate on everything, and every issue is a debate. And now we now a lot of, for a lot of other financial and other reasons, we've got. Uh, they're shooting. Oh, it's lunch, actually. We just got called for lunch. Uh, oh, lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See. Well, to finish the thought, um, uh, we 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 default to debate on every issue. And usually a low level of debate, you know, like, are you for creation or evolution? Well, let's see. Creation evolves and evolution creates. So Thank why you. is one against the other? Right. You know? And uh, so on a fairly low level, and then with shows, so we got, you know, the lefties and the righties, and we're into this confrontational, reducing everything to some polarized uh, way that keeps us from really being able to think creatively together. 
And I think that's where story and storytelling and a part of our cultural DNA and what it all is. So this is all part of the path forward, I think. And